and even the fact that there is some evidence that something may have even been removed from the Giza Plateau. Uh, even Egypt's leading it, uh, Dr. Zahi Hawis, if you remember in recent years, thought that he found the tomb of Osiris, uh, telling us if nothing else that, it, it, that at least some of the leading experts in the world actually believe that Osiris is based upon a historical figure and that there are occultists, and among them Freemasons, who have a very strong interest in finding or locating that body, or perhaps they already have, but that in any case, the hope was there by these mystics to resurrect their God, to bring forth their God. Now here's why this is important. Because they were basing this upon the prophecies that are encoded upon the great seal of the United States. And therefore, it's important for the great seal to itself tell us something about this God. Who was this God they believed in? And I don't have time, of course, to go into all the different symbols that are on the great seal. And I want to move uh, past this quickly. But how much time do I have? How much? Whoa. 20 minutes. Well, there's no way. I got another 50 pages. Well, anyway. Uh, okay, so 20 minutes, that's going to mean like uh, straight down. Okay. Uh, so let's do it quickly. The most indisputable authentication that the great seal of the United States symbols and signals are in fact an openly hidden prophecy about the coming of a new world order God. Your great seal. It all points to him, but this is the most powerful one is the phrase Novus Ordo Seclorum. Uh, a New Order of the Ages, it was adapted by Charles Thompson in 1782 uh, when he was designing the Great Seal and according to the official record, uh, Charles Thompson, uh, and by the way, he was a friend of the Masons. People, people always say, well, it was designed by Charles Thompson. He wasn't a Freemason. He was a very close friend of the Freemasons. He might have been a closet Freemason and he was certainly a great supporter of Benjamin Franklin's uh, American Philosophical Society. But in any case, he created the phrase Novus Ordo Seclorum from inspiration that he found uh, within a prophetic line. In Virgil's Eclogue 4, line 5, the uh, Latin Magnus Ab Integro Seclorum Nascitur Ordo, uh, the interpretation of that original Latin meaning and the majestic role of circling centuries begins anew. But ladies and gentlemen, this section of Virgil's Eclogue is where the prophecy of the Kumain Sibyl. How popular is the Kumain Sibyl? She sits alongside the Old Testament prophets uh, in, at the Vatican, inside the Sistine Chapel, and yet she was an Apollinian prophetess, identified in the Bible as a demonic deceiver, a prophetess of Apollo. This is where her prophecy tells us that Jupiter's son, Zeus's son, Apollo, is going to return at some point in the future, according to this pagan prophetess, Apollo is going to return. And that it will be he who will lead this new order of the ages. Let me jump forward and read it to you very quickly from the beginning of the prophecy. Here's what we read. Now the last stage of Kume Sibyl's song has come and gone. And the majestic role of circling centuries begins anew. That's where Novus Ordo Seclorum was taken. Justice returns, returns old Saturn's reign with a new breed of men sent down from heaven. Only do thou at the boy's birth in whom the iron shall cease, the golden race arise. Befriend him, chaste Lucina, tis thine own Apollo reigns." End quote. So according to Virgil and the Cumain Sibyl, I didn't read the entire thing by the way, whose prophecy formed the Novus Ordo Seclorum on the Great Seal of the United States, the New World Order begins, first of all, if you read the whole prophecy, during a time of chaos. When there's political chaos, the winds and the seas are tossed to and fro, in other words, a time just like today. This is when the Son of Promise arrives on Earth, Apollo incarnate, a pagan savior, who is born, by the way, as a mixture of men and gods, and, it, and, and if you read her prophecy, it sounds very much like what the watchers were doing and also like what's happening in some of our laboratories today where we are mixing human-animal chimeras, at least at the embryonic level. And I'm suspicious in government-funded laboratories that are beyond congressional review 
something much more extensive. But to understand why such a fanciful prophecy about Apollo, the son of Jupiter returning to earth should be important to you because in ancient literature, Jupiter is the Roman replacement of Yahweh as the greatest of the gods. His son Apollo is the replacement of Jesus. And furthermore, and this is a very interesting part of this prophecy actually, uh, it says it is justice who returns, returns old Saturn's reign. Saturn, by the way, is the Roman version of Satan. This is on your great seal. When, when the, when the um, apex of Satan's power comes to rule over the earth, according to the Cumaean Sibyl's prophecy, Apollo will return, but he will be returned by justice. Well, of course, justice, this is Lady Justice, blindfolded, uh, holding scales in the sword, all of our courts of law, our justice systems, uh, meaning that she represents the enforcement of secular law and is the power, according to the Sibyl's conjure, who is going to require global compliance to the zenith of Satan's authority over the earth. Now, some will say, well, Satan has authority over the earth right now. Oh, he, I know he does, but there is a difference when it says now he has come forward in great wrath. There is a moment coming when these powers are going to be ratcheted up to a level which people have never seen before, and let's hope that people can do as Catherine Ulbricht was saying, Lord, give me strength so I will be able to endure. Now, this is very important. I have 15 minutes, I think. Man, I'm buying them by the nickel now. You don't know what that means. You'd have to go back to the farm, I guess. Um, the Bible's accuracy along this same line is frightening. Let me read you something very quickly. It's in the New Testament. The identity of the God who comes, the Antichrist, could be viewed as Apollo. The same God repeated on the great seal of the United States, listen to what it says, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And of course, the Greek word perdition, apollia, apollyon, apollo, and by the way, numerous scholarly sources again and again prove that these characters are one and the same. Here's another one, Revelation 17, 8. I think ties the coming of Antichrist with the return of this Masonic God on our great seal by revealing that the beast will ascend from the bottomless pit and enter him. Here's what it says, the beast thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend from the bottomless pit and go into perdition, Apollia, Apollo, Apollyon, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundations of the earth when they behold the beast that was and is not. Uh, the beast that was and is not and yet is. I don't know if I can do this in 10 minutes, but I'm going to try. It's not just the great seal of the United States that prophesies the return of this God. It's actually encoded on dozens of symbols and icons that belong to the founding of the United States of America. But some of these are huge and they're right out in the open. Unrecognized by the vast majority of people uh, around the world is I think the greatest conspiracy of all time sitting right out in the open in Washington DC and at the Vatican. It is an ancient magical talismanic diagram the lost symbol based on the history and cult of Isis, Osiris, Horus, and the prophecy not only of the deity's return, but the mechanism, according to the ancient traditions, that makes it happen. This primeval concept was designed in antiquity for the express purpose of regeneration, resurrection, and apotheosis for deity incarnation from the underworld to the earth's surface. 